Hi, welcome to the Movie Blog. My name is John Campia, and this is my quick three-minute review of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Harry Potter is entering into his fifth year at Hogwarts, and he's a very different Harry Potter than he's been in the first four films. This coming on the heels of the events at the end of Harry Potter 4, in which Harry Potter witnesses the return of Lord Voldemort and has to helplessly stand by and watch Voldemort kill his friend Cedric, and this affects him in a very deep way. And therein lies the strength of this film, but I'll get to that in just a second. Right off the beginning of this film, like every other Harry Potter film, we see Harry Potter in the regular Muggle world getting ready to start his new year at Hogwarts. Only this time, while still in the Muggle world, he's attacked by two Death Eaters. This attack sets off a series of events in which we discover that the Ministry of Magic itself is conspiring to discredit not only Harry, but also Dumbledore himself in trying to cover up or hide or just plain deny the fact that Lord Voldemort has returned. This is the whole setup for the film of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. This film is a little bit of a problem for me in the sense that I'm not a big Harry Potter fan and I haven't been a big fan of the movies. Granted, Harry Potter 4 is one I've probably enjoyed most out of all of them, so the film's been building momentum, but I haven't been a big fan of, of the first three personally. So what were we going to get into coming into Harry Potter 4? I personally think that Harry Potter 5 is probably the strongest of the Potter films so far, and here's why. I referenced at the beginning that there's a lot of change in Harry Potter this time. I would say that Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix probably does more in terms of character development and getting us more to the characters themselves, and is really more of a character-driven movie than any of the previous films. Harry Potter's not the same wide-eyed, wondered boy caught in this brand new world, but rather now he's had his life threatened many times. He's faced death many times. He's seen things that most people will never see in their lives. And he has grown as a person and affected him, become a little bit darker, become a little bit more cynical. His friends around him, the supporting cast, have also grown and developed as characters. And sitting there as an audience member watching this film, was really rich in that sense, seeing these characters develop, because we know these characters and we've seen them grow, we've grown along with them, and that was quite interesting. A lot of these franchise films, the character that they are in the third part is the exact same character that they are in the first part, and that is a weakness that Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix avoids, and it really gives this movie its deeper meaning. On the weaker side of things, there's really not any action at all in this fantasy movie for the first you know three and a half quarters of the film uh, there is a spectacular set piece as we get towards the end of the film that is very very well done the film ends beautifully and sets us up perfectly for the next Harry Potter installment there are a couple of as somebody who didn't read the books I can only say a tribute moments to things in the book that they had to cut out of course you know you have to cut out things from the book because if you didn't the movie would be eight hours long but you know there are several things and I'll just throw this one in as a minor spoiler but uh, Hagrid's, Hagrid's brother is in the movie and maybe he played a major role in the book but he played an absolutely useless role in the movie he didn't need to be there um, it made him even being there kind of made the movie drag a bit and that's just one example there are a few scenes like that in the movie that really had nothing to do with the overall story and could have been removed without any problem overall I found Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix to be a very rich character driven film that I enjoyed very much some terrific special effects the end um, set piece was wonderful it does drag in a few spots is really not the same amount of excitement or wonder that there is in the other Harry Potter films but I believe the strengths of this film overtake that. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix an 8 out of 10 and give you a very enthusiastic recommendation to go see it. For the Movie Blog, I'm John Campia.